Sometimes, calling a phone dumb can be a compliment, especially if that's the kind of phone you are looking for. This little guy I have on my desk today is called the Light Phone 2. And like usual, we're going to find out if the Light Phone is a lightweight. Supposedly, this is one of those simple, minimalist phones that only do a few things, so you can reduce the amount of time spent staring at a screen, which of course is a healthy desire. But the unhealthy part of all of this is that the light phone still costs $300. And I don't know about you, but if I'm spending $300 on something, it better do some things, like more than one. The phone itself is very small, thin, and, well, light. Let's get started. You might have noticed by now that the light phone screen is a bit different. Instead of an AMOLED or LCD, this guy is an e-ink display, like an e-reader or a Kindle, meaning it has two colors, black and white, and a refresh rate of whenever I feel like it, which is usually after a button press or something. Right off the bat, I can tell the vibrator is pretty loosey-goosey. See if you can hear it. It's like a couple of rocks in a tin can. It does have a full-blown QWERTY keyboard for sending text messages, but no email or spell check. It's got an alarm capability, and even a few ringtones to choose from. And that's about it. No cameras, no internet, and probably no way of surviving what's coming. But let's keep going. The Life Phone 2 has that electronic paper e-ink screen that's just shy of 3 inches. At first glance and first touch, I thought the screen might be made of plastic, which usually scratches at a level 2 or 3. But it turns out that it's using a frosted, roughed up glass layer that's acting like sandpaper to my Mohs hardness tools. You can see the markings at levels 3, 4, and 5. And these aren't scratches though, just permanent dust streaks from my picks. This means that the screen is still pretty resilient from actual physical damage, but if left alone with your keys or coins, it's going to get superficially scuffed up in a way that's difficult to clean. There is no front-facing camera on the Light Phone 2, nor can it receive picture messages. It's got the front proximity sensors and an earpiece grill below the glass and screen layer that won't be falling out on its own. The sides of the phone are made from plastic, along with the volume buttons that are placed on either side of the menu button. You can see the screen flash white every now and then. This is how the e-ink screen refreshes itself, but I'll explain more about that in a second. The top of the phone has a headphone jack and power button, and there's a whopping total of one gigabyte of onboard storage for music. We do have an unlocked SIM card tray, but no additional expandable memory. One gig is all you get. Then down here at the bottom, we have the blast from the past micro USB port, which most smartphones started phasing out about three years ago, and the back of the phone still has no camera, and appears to be made from plastic. The light logo on the back is a built-in part of the panel and won't be falling out on its own. Fun fact, there's actually been a light bulb burning in Livermore, California, almost non-stop for the past 117 years. It's called the Centennial Light. Most of the wear and tear on light bulbs comes from turning them off and on, and not just by leaving them lit. LED bulbs, of course, last about 50 times longer than a normal incandescent. But still, 117 years is very impressive. Congrats to Livermore, California. Speaking of lights, let's talk about the screen. We've never burned an e-ink display before. Each pixel only has two colors, black and white, and can flash back and forth between the two. But the screen doesn't use power to maintain what state that pixel is left in, like a normal AMOLED or LCD would. It's kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch. Once it is that color, it stays that color until it's refreshed. You can see as I flip through the screens, there's also a bright flash of all the pixels switching to their new orientation. And sometimes there's a bit of ghosting from what was left on the screen before it. But interestingly enough, even after 50 seconds of burning, the e-ink display appears to have no damage. The faint ghosting you see over the entire screen is just one of those quirks of e-ink, and doesn't have anything to do with the fire. Everything, surprisingly, still works. 
Thumbs up for that. Now, realistically, with a phone this small, it will most likely always be in a front pocket. But for kicks and giggles, if you were ever to put it in your back pocket, things might get a bit dangerous. For both the phone and your bum. As we can see, the phone screen is indeed made of glass, with cracks running along the entire surface. And now, only the bottom strip of the screen below that crack is still working. The Lifephone 2 does not survive the bin test. It is interesting that the portion above the crack is still frozen in its last state before breaking. The e-ink never had a chance to refresh or clear itself, so it's just permanently in that position now. And since we're already this far, we might as well just see what else is inside this little guy. Now, initially I thought the whole back housing might just pop off, like we've seen on some other cheaper Android phones. And even though I was successful with my use of brute force, this turned out to be the wrong way to open it up. And I'll show you why in just a second. With the plastic back housing forcibly removed, we can see that the screen is glued to a battery and mid-frame sandwich, and the correct way to take apart the phone would have been to remove the screen first, with heat and gentle prying, and then unscrew some screws. It's interesting that even now, with the e-ink screen completely detached from the phone, it's still displaying its final frame, even though both screen ribbons are ripped completely off. I'll remove the two Phillips head screws and unclip the ribbons, just like a little Lego. One is for the display, and the other is probably for the digitizer. The back of the mid-frame sandwich has the battery. This is gently adhered to the back of the motherboard. And is 950 milliamp hours, which is about three times the capacity of the Apple Watch. I'll pop off the two black plastic end caps. And then if we look closely, we can see that there is a Phillips head screw in each of the four corners. And still attached to these screws is a gold threaded insert. Normally these inserts are embedded into the plastic frame and give something solid for the screw to grip onto when they're assembling the phone. But since I manhandled it out of the housing with force instead of finesse, it just wants to spin freely on the screw. Let's pretend I did all that ripping apart on purpose to show you what the screw inserts look like. You know, for educational purposes. Once all the inserts are pulled off the screws, I can separate the mid-frame from the motherboard. It does have some copper sheeting on it, which is nice. I'm glad to see that the $300 are being put to good use. Gotta keep the phone cool while the uh, alarm clock goes off and the screen refreshes twice a minute. This phone's working as hard as the White House during a pandemic. Good thing help is finally on the way. The motherboard has the headphone jack, front-facing proximity sensors, earpiece speaker on the back, and the microphone and micro USB port down at the bottom. And of course, our loosey-goosey coin-style vibration motor in the plastic bit. I mean, I think the Life Phone is kind of a fun idea. It can also be its own Wi-Fi hotspot, and is definitely a step above the no-phone. And I also think that people really are addicted to their smartphones these days, and we know that smartphones don't bring happiness. So I guess, if money isn't an issue, and you have 300 bucks to burn, you can always snag a Life Phone, even if it'll probably only end up decorating your shelf 20 minutes after you fail your tech detox. If you're really serious about wanting to cut back on doomsday scrolling though, they still do sell flip phones for super cheap, and maybe one of those is a better option. Either way though, let me know what you think down in the comments. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter, unless of course you have a light phone. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.